Okay, so again, as usual, first uh, review of major points, and then we will be just addressing each of those major points with the problems. All right, uh, so Faraday's law, that's what uh, we did not have on the second midterm exam. Um, Ampere's law. Right, so if you have a few cards, right, let me make it small. Uh, with different directions, I don't think I need this. Let's say uh, current I1 up, current I2 is down, then I know this is I3, right? In a Pierce law, uh, you remember it's an integral over the closed loop d dot ds equals to mu, uh, mu naught times I enclosed. Yeah, speaking of Ampere's law, you remember we modified it later. We added displacement current. And I promised to you on the, on the, uh, during the class that I'm not going to uh, give you any questions on the displacement current, right? So we're going to use this Ampere's law without that additional term, which, which is called displacement current. Right, uh, so, uh, and of course, it is over uh, any closed loop, which we call Ampere's loop. Right, so you can pick uh, any loop, let's say, if you pick this loop, right? Uh, for the integration, of course, you need to pick a certain direction. Clockwise, counterclockwise, right, in order to integrate. So, let's say you pick this direction, right? So that will be a uh, direction of integration. And so this, yeah, you just need to evaluate for a certain system. Uh, and what about this I enclosed? These two cards are enclosed, oops, 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 enclosed, and this guy is outside of the loop, so we are not counting that in. Now, uh, these two currents, and every time in our systems, uh, currents are either parallel or anti-parallel. Right? Yeah, guys, you can move uh, back and forth, feel free, right? Uh, which of those currents are positive and which of those currents are negative? What was the rule? Do you remember the rule? How can we find which current is positive, which current is negative? Right hand rule, right? So curl your fingers in the direction of your travel, right, around the loop. Sort of like this for maybe I can draw it. But the drawing is going to be for one, two, three, four, and the finger is up, right? So that's the positive direction for the current. So in this case, it means that I1 is going to be positive and I2 is going to be negative, right? So in this case, I can write so I uh, in equals to I1 minus I sub 2. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So, and here's the question when you frame this, because it's uh, important. And now I can separate the first block. Then, um, uh, yeah, we apply that Pierce's law for an infinitely long uh, straight wire. Let's say infinitely long straight wire with the current I. I. So, uh, of course, current moving charges. They create magnetic field. They create magnetic field. And magnetic field lines are circles, right? Magnetic field lines are circles, right? And uh, to find directions of those magnetic field lines, right? Again, we need to use the right hand rule number two. You remember right hand rule number one? Again, according to me, uh, it's uh, uh, the way we find direction of the cross product, right? Mathematical tool. And this is for physics, right? So in this case, uh, right hand rule gives me uh, this direction. That's uh, magnetic. These are magnetic field lines. In the formula, we derived it. It's a mu naught i over two uh, pi. Uh, okay, we use d. D is the shortest distance, right? So if you take this point, all right. So this is d. Okay, let me separate this. Frame it. Okay, second. Uh, Although I think we had a questions in the second midterm exam on this form, right? I think we did, right? So I could have skipped. <clears throat> so then, after this, we went, yeah. Is D the radius of the magnetic field? Mm. What is okay, D, yeah, you can call it the radius to, to, for example, one of these uh, magnetic field lines, but it's better to tell it's the shortest distance from the point where you want to find the magnetic field to the center of the wire. Okay. Yeah. Right. Perpendicular distance, the shortest distance, right? Okay. okay. Uh, now, after this, we went uh, into the magnetic forces. So, magnetic force. 
now it's a new bullet, right? So, magnetic force. Uh, first, let's say uh, magnetic force. Um, here, um, magnetism, it's all about dynamics. In order to produce magnetic field, what does the charge have to do? In order to produce a magnetic field, moves. In order for a charge to experience magnetic force from the magnetic field, what does the charge have to do? The same answer, move, right? So it's all about dynamics. If charge is at rest, it's uh, from the point of view of magnetism, it's a useless piece of charge, right? But of course, from the electrical point of view, it will produce the force and uh, it will create the electric field. But uh, from the magnetic field point, from the magnetism, uh, charge must to move in order to produce field, magnetic field, and it must move in order to experience magnetic force. So let's assume that this charge moves with velocity v, for example. And let's say it is ex it is it experiencing. I mean, it is exposed to the uh, magnetic uh, field b. So then there will be force acting on this charge, uh, F magnetic, it's a Q V cross B. So now in order to find direction of this cross product, of course we need to use right hand rule number one. Right? You can use three fingers, you can use two, I mean you can use the whole hand. Uh, actually, speaking of directions, what will be the direction of the magnetic force in this case? Actually, I did not tell you a very important piece of information. Let's assume Q is positive, right? <laughs> because your answer would be correct if uh, charge were negative, right? Yeah. But in this case, if charge is uh, positive, then uh, V cross V, uh, V cross V, so it will be out of the board, out of the board. Okay. So frame this. Of one of the fundamental equations. And now, uh, magnetic force on a piece of wire. Let's say you have a piece of wire, straight one. I'm not going to give you uh, problems with the cur curved uh, wire. So I'm trying to be nice. Yeah. We had one problem in our recitation classes. So let's say uh, current I flows that way, for example. And let's say it is, it, it, it's exposed to the magnetic field. Or B, and let's say uh, length L of this wire is exposed only to the magnetic field. So the force then, in this case, um, maybe I'll just put an error. So force will be in this case um, I L cross B. What determines the direction of L? What determines the direction of L? Current. 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 This current determines the direction of this L. Right? It's sort of an artificial vector L. Uh, let me write. I determines direction of L. Okay, so let me frame this as well. Right. This is about this formula about that picture and this formula about this. Okay, so after this, uh, we went to uh, Faraday's law. Or oh, maybe I'll go over here. So far ground with Faraday's law. Another fundamental law, right? <coughs> and so I'll just write down. So first, the most yeah we use the formula which we use most of the time. EMF. I forgot my loop. What did I, uh, I think I was planning to put it in. I feel horrible now without my little print. I never go to the class uh, uh, when we talk about magnetism without that, uh, my metal loop, right? Now I feel lost. <laughs> yeah. Stretchable. Okay, <laughs> but it feels so. <laughs> I'll try. It. I'll keep it here. <laughs> All right. So any 
anyway, so let me just use the, uh, yeah, imagine the loop. So the idea is this. So if you have a conducting loop, right? Conducting loop. And if it is, if it is, if it is, if it is exposed to the magnetic field, external magnetic field, and of course it will create the flux, magnetic flux. If that magnetic flux changes in time, then uh, current will be induced in the loop. So, uh, and experimental expression, this is one of the fundamental expressions, right? So EMF produced in the loop equals minus uh, rate of change of the magnetic flux. So that's what most of the time we use to right, Faraday's law. And of course, it's not the most general uh, form of the Faraday's law. Of course, there is a more general uh, form. Uh, we introduced it, we discussed it, but we barely used it, right? So, but anyway, let me uh, write it also general form, right? EMF equals to integral of the closed loop E dot ds equals to minus d phi uh, over dt. This is the most general form of the Faraday's law, but most of the time we use that. So, uh, and every time application of this Faraday's law, we split into two steps. First, we usually find the direction of the current, or direction of EMF, and then the magnitude. So, a magnitude, EMF equals, we're going to just use the absolute value of d phi over dt, and then the second step, lenses rule in order to take care of the uh, minus lens rule. So let me just quickly refresh lens rule. Or look, again, we're going to use it. Uh, so if magnetic flux is growing through the loop, <laughs> if the magnetic flux is growing, that is fun, right? If the magnetic flux is growing, then the response of that loop, right, will be, I have to shake your response, right? Uh, so the response will be, uh, system doesn't like changes. In this case, a flux is growing, that loop will not like it, and of course it will try to induce current in such a direction so that the induced magnetic field is in the opposite direction to the uh, direction of the external magnetic, flux, magnetic field. So as a result, be induced is in the opposite direction to the external, right? And then the right hand rule, once you know direction of the induced car, induced magnetic field, then you apply right hand rule number two to find uh, direction of the current right hand rule, right? To find I induced, I induced. And then, so in this case, it's sort of like a, works as a saboteur, right? try to suppress the growth of this flux. And if the flux, magnetic flux, is dying through the loop, then system becomes supportive, right? So it induces current, um, and as a result, induced magnetic field will be in the same direction as the external magnetic field. And then again, you use right hand rule to find the direction of the induced current. So we will look at a couple of examples about this. Okay, yeah, it's, I can separate this, so Faraday, Faraday's law box. Law. And after that, yeah, inductance. A few words about inductance, and then, then we introduce inductance. So first, let's start from with definition. Yeah, by definition, L inductance three lines by definition. You just calculate the total flux, magnetic flux to the system, and divide it by the current which creates the flux. That's what we uh, defined as the inductance. So that's just definition of the inductance. Units of inductance. What are the units of inductance? Henry, right? Units of uh, flux, magnetic flux. <laughs> yeah, it's a safe way to get out of the question, right? Weber, but of course what you said is the Weber, right? <laughs> right, uh, so these are uh, H, Henry. Uh, then what else? Ah, uh, yeah, and then we applied it 
for a solenoid, and we found for solenoids it's a mu naught. Um, okay, S squared, I think. I uh, S squared. Away. Yeah, S squared A uh, over uh, L. So it's a for a solenoid. For a solenoid. Inductance of a solenoid. We write this formula. Then, ah, uh, yes, and the potential difference. If you have, yeah, and again, I realized I did not take my, that's my small solenoid. So the potential difference, delta V equals minus L di over dt, right? So the last one I will probably frame because yeah, it's uh, very important, right? Potential difference across a solenoid, across a, an inductor. So let me separate this. And after this, we went into electromagnetic waves. No, first let's discuss traveling wave. Traveling wave. So now, traveling wave. <coughs> so the formula for the traveling wave, uh, right, let's say I, I, I write it this way. A sine kx, uh, let me use the minus plus omega t plus pi minus. First, along which direction? Well, along which axis does this wave travel? Along which direction does this, uh, that, does this wave? Wait, 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 wait. My question is completely. Let's start with this. <laughs> it's like in which direction I'm pointing, right? <laughs> Something like this. Right? So now, along which axis does it travel? Positive x. Positive x. This, if we had here z, it means it, tra it would travel along z direction. Okay, positive z direction. If we had here y, it means it travels along y direction, right? And it oscillates along y direction, propagates along x direction, oscillates along y direction. It's like a wave on a string. Particles of the string just move up and down, up and down along y direction, but the wave energy propagates along x direction. So every time you need to realize that these are oscillations of something and this is the propagation of the wave. Two different directions because, yeah, I assume that we have a transverse wave. Okay, now, of course, this is the amplitude. So you should know travels with that. K, how do we define K? And how do we call it? K is the wave number, new quantity, right? Usually most of students don't never heard about this before. Wave number, I usually write it just wave slash number to save space. And by definition, it's a two pi divided by wavelength. So K it's a, uh, in simple words, it's just a spatial frequency. It's a 2 pi divided by lambda. What is lambda? It's a spatial periodicity. It's a periodicity of the wave in space. Then, uh, yeah, this is wave number. And of course, x is uh, uh, just a spatial variable, spatial variable. So everything that you want to know about uh, spatial behavior of the wave is in here in the first in the first term. All the temporal behavior of the wave is in the second term. So omega, it's an angular frequency, right? Angular frequency. And we introduce it as 2 pi divided by t. Structure of these two quantities exactly the same. 2 pi divided by the spatial uh, periodicity. Omega, it's 2 pi divided by temporal periodicity. Then, yeah, of course, minus means uh, in uh, plus x direction, propagation, propagation of the wave. If we have plus here, it means that minus, wait, minus x direction. So yeah, you have to remember about this fluid of the signs. And of course, phi naught is just initial phase, initial Phase. And how do we call this this whole thing in now in these brackets in these parentheses? How do we call this the whole structure? 
It's the phase of the wave. Phase of the wave. Right? This kx minus omega t plus phi naught, it's the uh, phase of the wave. All right, then what else? Uh, ah, yes, speed. Of course, speed. How can we find speed? Let's say d. Speed. In order to find velocity or speed, of course, you need to mix both spatial quantities with temporal quantities. It's like you need to know the distance, you need to know travel time, right? So here are the same. So in order to, to find speed, you need to mix parameter from this side and parameter from that side. Omega divided by k. Right. If you forget uh, which omega over k or k or k or omega check units very quickly, right? It's not that complicated. So, Omega divided by k, or v lambda f. So there are two ways of calculating. It's time for me to press this button. Okay, still recording. Cool. So I set alarms every half an hour. Frequency. Yeah, F, just a regular frequency, which is in hertz. Okay, and then yeah, probably it's also, let's write F. Uh, how is F and period related? How are they related? The inverse. Right? Inverse, just inverse. Usually, yeah, usually students know that, no troubles. F equals 1 over T. Okay, let me frame this. This and this velocity. Okay, so let me... Check if I mention if I did not miss anything. This is yeah. Yeah. Next, electromagnetic wave. So all that stuff can be used now to describe the electromagnetic wave. So now EM wave. EM wave. EM just electromagnetic wave. Right. Uh, so I will just draw the picture. Right. So let's say. This is uh, x, y, z, right-handed coordinate system, right? X cross v. Yeah, it's a right, right-handed coordinate system. And uh, so, electromagnetic wave in electromagnetic wave, uh, electric field, magnetic field, and velocity, they are perpendicular to each other. You cannot generate electromagnetic wave violating that. That's how nature works, right? Uh, so. Let me draw. If electric field oscillates in the uh, y direction, right? So this is my E. Then, uh, and, uh, and if this wave propagates in the x direction, so this is the velocity, then magnetic field must oscillate it must oscillate in the z direction. So this will be my b oscillation. So, b. so I can draw. So that's my b. So every time e, b, and v are perpendicular to each other. Okay, I can write here vector e perpendicular to v. Again, it's very important, right? So electric field oscillates in the y direction, but propagates in, this, in the x direction. So now uh, the uh, formulas which describes this, basically E is the traveling wave, V is the traveling wave, and they all propagate in the same direction. So as a result, I can write electric field, right? Probably I will write without a vector, just where is it? Yeah equals E naught, then sine k, which coordinate do I have to write here now, next to x? Uh, next to <laughs> <laughs> Just the answer. <laughs> of course, yeah, next to k, it's an x, right? And since it propagates in the positive x direction, so there, will, there must be a minus over here. Then, uh, omega t, in phi naught. Usually when people work with electromagnetic wave, it oscillates so fast, oscillations, frequency is so much, usually initial phase is not that important. 
What should I put here? Subscript. Which sub subscript should I put here? Hmm? Louder. What I just told you about guys about this. It's a very common place for mistake. That's why I paused and started asking you and I'm trying to get an uh, answer out of you. Electromagnetic wave is a transverse wave. Electric field oscillates in the y direction. And this subscript should show that direction of oscillation. But the wave propagates in the x direction. So here x, it's a propagation of the wave, but the electric field oscillates in the y direction, transverse wave. It's like in a string, right? Again, as I mentioned, if you have a, a string and you create a wave, particles of the string just move up and down, up and down. But as a result, energy wave is, um, is transferred along in the horizontal direction, in the horizontal direction. So here we should put, okay, I will use red to emphasize why. Because again, every semester on the final exam, I see uh, plenty of mistakes of this type. St students doesn't realize the direction of propagation and direction of oscillations are different. In this case, perpendicular. And I will circle this to emphasize different. Then, a magnetic field. Um, magnetic field B uh, equals amplitude B naught times sine kx minus omega t plus y naught. You see, this structure signs exactly the same. If you know a uh, formula which, okay, I mean this expression which describes uh, this traveling wave, you can easily write down our uh, expression for the magnetic field. This is exactly the same. The only difference is in the amplitude. Now, which subscript should I put here? C. C. That looks good. Now I can go Z and frame here. Nice. Because magnetic field oscillates in the same direction. And uh, again, it can be shown mathematically, but of course we did not do it. Electric field amplitude and magnetic field amplitude. Uh, how are they related? And which field is stronger, first of all? Which, um, which um, uh, amplitude is, is larger? Electric field every time, gigantically larger. By the speed of light. They are related through the speed of light. Okay, so I will write it here. So electric field amplitude equals C times magnetic field amplitude. Again, it's another place where students, which another formula which students tend to forget. For example, I give on the exam this uh, expression describing the traveling wave of the electric field, and I would usually ask, so write down the expression for the magnetic field, and lots of nonsense over here writing down the amplitude of the magnetic field. Let me frame this. Cool. Now, next. Um, yeah. Now, after this, after this, we went to interference, right? Two ways. Okay, it looks like I'm running out of space. I yeah, usually take the final exam reviews long, long material. So now, interference. Maybe I can squeeze it into this part, and then that will be used for something else. Um, interference. Oh, yeah. It doesn't go to sleep, it just stops the I need to move it. Okay, so let's start with Ampere's law first. Uh, and then we'll continue with it. Uh, first, let's say we have these cars. Alright, so let's say I1. Uh, I two, I three, and let's say I four. So all of these currents, I sub one, two, three, four, they all have the same current, two amps, but different different directions, in the board, out of the board, right? And let's say somebody forced you to use these, uh, for example, uh, Ampere, Ampere in loop. Let's say something like this. 
variables. And let's say somebody forced you to uh, use this direction to calculate integral. So we need to find uh, this, the value of this integral, b dot ds. So the question is not about finding magnetic field, which is much, is, which simplifies the problem tremendously. We just need to find the value of this integral. So we just need to use Ampere's law. We just need to calculate properly which current is enclosed and uh, figure out which current is positive and which current is negative. Right. So, um, so we just need to find I enclosed. Them. So uh, I four outside. So it is not a close, so we have to we can forget about that. So now which current is positive? Which direction for a current is positive? In or out? Huh? In? I saw you you no, I didn't do that. Ah, okay. So the rule, you remember, you just need to curl your fingers. Okay, I can draw a three-dimensional case. All right, so you need to curl your fingers in the direction of the travel. And as a result, your outstretched thumb gives you a direction for a positive current. So, into the board is a positive direction. So, as a result, uh, I2 is positive and these two guys are negative. Right? Make sense? Following guys? So, as a result, I enclosed equals to I2 is positive minus I1 and minus I3. Right hand rule. I can show that these directions are according to the right hand rule. Okay, so now let's just calculate integral of d dot ds equals to mu naught and this. So I2 is 2 amps minus 2 amps and minus 2 amps of power attractors. I assume that they're all the same, but of course directions are different. Of course you will end up with minus 2 uh, mu naught. Right? It's more like a conceptual question, right? Just quickly check if you remember how to use the right hand rule in this case. Otherwise, it's quite trivial. Right. This. Okay, so now let's just apply Ampere's law properly, right? Um, like we've done already in the lecture. Well, now we have so many erasers here. If I, as I said, like a year ago, I remember I came here once. There was not a single one. I had to run up and down this building trying to find the eraser. Now we have like five of them. So uh, I think we did this problem in a class because not many, not many problems we can address uh, with easy uh, calculus. So let's say we have a wire. All right, this current I, which goes flows this way to the wire, three-dimensional picture. And we need to find magnetic field. Let's say find find magnetic field inside. V inside. I discussed it in the lecture, but we are refreshing, so why not? Right. Again, you can use. Uh, what? Dio's our law, for example, but it will be very, very complicated. So we're going to use, of course, a Dio's law. So I will just rewrite it first. The law itself, d dot ds equals to mu naught times i d naught. First step, every time, what should be the first step when you apply a Dio's law? What? Select the surface. This is what? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, of course, I'll move Ampere and move, right? That surface was for Gauss's law, right? Yeah. It takes time, too. <laughs> so, Ampere and move. So, of course, first thing we need to pick an Ampere and move, right? And, of course, every time Ampere and loop must be in the region in the where you want to find the magnetic field. So, I will use green. So, let's say, since we're interested in sight, so let's pick an Ampere and loop inside of some arbitrary radius r. <coughs> okay, and uh, now I will start evaluating the integral b dot ds. But still, which step I skipped, missed? What do I have to do also? 
with with up here and move. Okay, that reminds me to. Yeah, travel direction. Because we need to pick a travel direction. Uh, so which direction would be the best for travel direction? To make this car in positive, right? We have to pick the direction to making this car in positive. So it should be this way, which is a counterclockwise like counterclockwise. This will be the best direction. So I can write as a result: this will be my ds. This will be my ds. Uh, ds, right? So direction, travel direction is counterclockwise. In this case. This card is positive. Right. So now, direction of the magnetic field. I'm not going to justify, but you can easily easily get what should be a direction. You can still use uh, this trick, right? Of course, it's not just a uh, very thin piece of wire, but direction of the current will be still the same, right? I mean, direction of the magnetic field will be like still the same. So of course, direction of the magnetic field will be the same. So magnetic field is this, B, B, B. OK, so now I will all set. I'm ready to uh, evaluate this integral. Right? So I can, I can open up uh, my explanation box. Since magnetic field and ds are in the same direction, so dot product is going to give us just the product of these two magnitudes of these two vectors. B dot ds equals to bds. So basically, angle equals to zero between them. When we have when we have dot product, which function do we have to use? Sine or cosine? Another typical mistake for a place for mistakes. Cosine function. Cosine function. Right. <coughs> so it will be integral of b uh, ds. Students sometimes sometimes laughing that I'm asking which function do I have to use for sine or sine. But I grade the exams and I can see still <laughs> tons of these uh, mistakes. So now next, now we have to use properties uh, symmetry of the problem. Uh, so if I take any point on the Ampereian loop, what can you tell about the magnitude of the magnetic field? Strength of the magnetic field will be the same exactly the same. But again, it's only about its strength, because directions of the magnetic field different. You see magnetic field direction here this way, here that way, here that way. So it means vectors are different. B as a vector, they're different because directions are different. But strength, magnitude, exactly the same. So B is the same. So let, let me open the explanation box. So since B is constant, on the Ampereum loop. So we can, as a result, we can take this B and extract out of the integral. Right? We've done this already quite a few times. Just refreshing. So as a result, I can take B outside. And as a result, we have the integral of Ds. And please, again, I see quite uh, often on the exam, students will write something like this, which doesn't make any sense from the mathematical point of view. ds equals to 2 pi r, right? Or uh, something, something like this, right? It's an integral of ds. What's the answer? So 2 pi r small. OK, I should have uh, shown that the radius of this uh, wire is r capital, let's say r capital. This is just clear indication that uh, we have problems with calculus, serious problems with calculus, right? <laughs> Let me erase this so that it wouldn't get, it wouldn't stuck into it in your heads, right? So, so uh, that is just a circumference of that uh, Ampereian loop, and as a result, we have uh, b times two pi r. Uh, so that's this side and. Uh, according to the right-hand side of the equation, it should be equal to mu naught times pi enclosed. So now we just need to find the <coughs> amount of the enclosed current. Again, at this point, tons of tons of mistakes finding enclosed current. Really, usually depressing, usually I trade it. Um, no, seriously, right? You are, sometimes you just want to get out a little bit and go for a walk, right? <laughs> right. 
so how can we find iron close? First of all, where is that current? It's uh, over here. This current is enclosed. Right? We need to find that amount of current. And this current is distributed over the whole cross-sectional area. But we are interested only in this small portion of the current. Right? So we need to find that. So I enclosed. And I usually do it in these steps. I usually say, let's assume that now we, we know the current density. Let's assume, but in a second we will find. So we have to multiply that current density by what in order to find the enclosed current? Area. What? Area. Which area? Uh, area? This enclosed area, right? So which is pi r small squared? Because now at this point, usually r small, r capital, is just a, uh, lots of lots of mass and nonsense. And again, it's not just a, quite, not just a few students. Usually, it's a massive. Usually, at this point, massive uh, number of mistakes. So uh, times pi r squared, r small. Now, how can we find this current density? What? Now we need to. We, now we. It's it's based off what we know. We know that this current I is uniformly distributed across the whole cross-sectional area of the wire. So we need to take the total current and divide it by the area uh, through which that current is flowing. Right. So it's I divided by by R capital squared. So now we just plug it here and. That will be the final result. So it will be i over pi r capital squared times pi r small squared. Of course, pi gets cancelled, pi get cancelled, and we have uh, i and the ratio of r small squared divided by r capital squared. Okay, so now we just need to plug it in our Ampere's pool. B times 2 pi r equals to mu mod times i r small squared over r capital squared. And again, it's uh, over here, uh, again, many mistakes. I can see sometimes uh, pi r squared, or just pi r, or uh, 4 pi over 3 r squared. <laughs> there are lots of, lots of uh, just uh, simple mistakes with um, how to find area or circumference or volume of simple geometrical objects, right? And I think I now I give these formulas on the formula sheet, usually at the end of the formula sheet, those are formulas, right? Just check it. Right? Um, so what? Uh, R can be cancelled, one R. Right? And the rest, just need to arrange nicely. So as a result, B. Now I will put as a function of r equals to mu naught i r stays here, uh, 2 pi r capital squared and r separate because it's a, only one variable r is all. For fun, quickly, should we let's calculate the area, not uh, enclosed current. Let's say, okay, the problem is solved. Let's say we have this system, this wire, right, with radius A and radius B, and here we have current flowing, right? So here we have current I. So let's say the question is, you need to find um, enclosed current in this loop of radius r small. So we need this is the hole. This is uh, this is just a cross-sectional picture of a wire, right? 
So let's find uh, amount of enclosed current in this. So I will start with the same, right? So I will say, let's assume that current density is low, and then we'll find it. So I enclosed equals to J times uh, which area do we have to use now? I highlighted it, this greenish area. That's where our I enclosed current. In this hole, there is nothing. It's an empty space. It's a vacuum. So there is no current in the hole. So how can we find this area? So we need to take area uh, with the radius r small, this area, and subtract the area of this circle. Right? So it's a pi r small squared minus pi a squared. Pi r small squared minus pi a squared. That's the area of this greenish, this greenish area was the whole thing. I'm just worried that you're so quiet. Is it simple? <coughs> okay. Then we'll move faster. Then, of course, the current density. <laughs> current density, of course, we just need to take the total current and subtract this uh, total area where the current is. Right. So now, again, we just need to remove this uh, hole. So pi, uh, what? Uh, b squared minus uh, pi a squared, right? And times b squared, pi r squared minus b squared. So pi gets canceled, and as a result, we have the answer, right? For the enclosed card. And so for the enclosed card, it's time to change the my marker. So then, done with Ampere's law. Any questions about this? Yeah? Okay. Now, forces. Faraday, I mean, um, magnetic force. I will erase this. Oh, can I? Some conceptual. Um, let's say we have magnetic field. This, 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 this. So, B. And let's say we have a charge over here. And we have stationary charge. What's the value of the magnetic force on this charge? What's the direction of the magnetic force on this charge? And the value. Stationary charge. Zero. Zero. Because again, you, I, as I told you, right, magnetism is all about dynamics. Charge must move in order to produce magnetic field, and a charge must move in order to experience force from the magnetic field. If a charge is stationary, magnetic force is zero. Right? Okay, I just want to emphasize on this. So if, if Q is stationary, V equals zero. So then, of course, force equals zero. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, it just right. and now um, let me ask you this: What if we have these three vectors? Let's say we have V, uh, we have magnetic field V, and we have force acting on this charge uh, this way. Three vectors. V, B, and F. Is it physically a possible situation? Force you remember E equals Q V cross B. Physically possible or not? Okay, V cross B. V that way, right? 
Uh, again, I don't want to show a strange sign, right? V, V is into the board, right? So V cross B, force supposed to be this way, but this force doesn't make sense. So this is just a physically impossible situation. Nature doesn't work this way, right? Again, just blame God, right? For that. Yeah, of course, me for creating a situation which is impossible. So yeah, it's physically impossible. impossible because the actual force should be uh, again v cross b the actual force should be this way right? so that's the direct that's a direction of the actual force on this charge assuming that this uh, magnetic field nice okay uh, now now let's uh, look at this case that we separated let's say we have a wire uh, which direction current flows uh, this way? I. And let's take a bunch of charges and find uh, directions of the forces acting on these charges. Uh, so let's start with the positive charge over here. So last. And let's say it moves with velocity V that way. What's uh, a direction of the magnetic force acting on this charge? So first, what do we have to do first? We need to find direction of the magnetic field first, right? We need to find the direction of the magnetic field created by this wire, right hand rule number two. Fingers this way along the direction of the current, and then my curl finger is supposed to give me a uh, direct, no. this way is better, right? <laughs> okay, so current that way, so I point my finger that way, and as a result, my curl fingers give me uh, Fingers give me directions of the magnetic field lines. So magnetic field lines are going to be, let me draw it this way, three-dimensional, uh, what, this way. And now two-dimensional picture, it means that uh, over here above, it's towards us, yes? Yeah, towards us. Uh, so B is towards, it's a dot, dot, dot. And below, of course, we'll have a bunch of so these are our magnetic field lines. So now, as a result, what's uh, a direction of the magnetic force acting on the charge? Volunteer. Down? Down. Down? Down. Down? Let's see. I have no idea. Uh, the uh, v that way, B is uh, towards us, right? Yeah, towards us. Uh, v cross B, it's down, right? V cross B is down. So that's the force. Uh, then, uh, what if we have a discharge and it moves which way? This way. That's the velocity. You see this black? Ah, uh, yeah. Isn't the charge that positive so it has to be the opposite? I put a plus in the middle. Yeah, so what would it be opposite? Like really? Okay, just to check, let me check this. So V cross B. First I align my hand along V. Then I need to turn uh, my fingers towards the second vector. The second vector V is towards you, right? So V cross B no it's down. Yeah, but would it like you have to flip it because it's second? No, it's positive. Oh, it's negative. Make sense? Now this charge. Direction. Left. Left. Yeah. Left. Okay. Two confirmations. Right. So uh, V B V cross B. V cross B is right, but because charge is negative, left. Right? Guys, again, V cross B will be this way, right? So uh, this will be a V cross B, but charge is negative. So as a result, we need to flip it, and this will be direction of the force. Again, uh, 
sometimes I see students uh, still make these mistakes uh, by getting to the charge. Because you usually worry mainly about applying right hand rule properly. As a result, the secondary problem, right? Believe me, you can forget sometimes. Like your head is all final, yeah, I found the direction, but then you need to flip. Charge is negative, right? Um, okay, it looks like you are good with these cross products, right? I have a quick question. Yeah. So if that positive charge is saying the bottom, with the bottom. Okay, let's do it. It would just be flipped to the left. And so the if positive charge over here, and which direction do you prefer? I mean, direction of the velocity. Oh, that's not right. With the velocity, well, no, no, it's, it's, it it's, it's, the left, right? that's important. If uh, velocity to the left, then what? Uh, v cross uh, V. So what's the direction of the force? V up. Really? I don't know. Uh, magnetic field is into the board. So V. Cross B, oh, down, down. down, right? Am I right? Yes. This is getting late. Right. So, uh, force this way. Okay. Let me just ask you maybe. So it's uh, now positive. I mean negative charge minus. Uh, let's say it moves this way. So what's the direction of the force in this case? Um, v cross V. The left. To the left. Cross product is to the right, but because charge is negative, it will be to the left. Right. So it will be to the left. Make sense? Now, um, so enough about this. So we we played with this. Now let's play with the force acting on the uh, piece of wire. Okay. So we have. Um, okay, I will put a new bullet. So here is the ceiling. Then here we have two springs, and between them there is a piece of wire. Everything is made out of conducting material, metals. It's a piece of equipment. <clears throat> right, so what? Uh, in order to find current, we just need to balance these two forces, right? That's it. F magnetic must be equal to mg. And from there, we should be able to find the direction, uh, to find the strength of the current. So uh, F magnetic must be equal to gravitational. So F magnetic. Uh, what's the angle between L and B? They're perpendicular to each other, right? L this way, B is into the board, right? So they're perpendicular to each other. And over here, let me show that L is perpendicular to the B, direction of B. So it will be I L B. Sine of pi over two, five, sine of ninety degrees, right? Wow. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good confirmation. Obtained, right? Ninety degrees equals to one. Okay, so that's why we have I L B. And it must be equal to M times G. So from here, current equals to MG divided by uh, L times B. So if you plug all numbers with uh, proper units in meters, for example, so you can get um, uh, 0.467 ampere. So get 360 exponent. Okay, so that's just an application of magnetic force on the wire. Now let's move into probably Faraday's law. I will turn the camera back on. Right. 
you know what else keep this problem, uh, you can look about the cyclotron radius. It just that lecture was screwed up completely when we were discussing the uh, cyclotron radius. Okay, so Faraday's law. Let's discuss Faraday's law. Uh, so let's say we have magnetic field presented by these dots, uniform magnetic field. So that's B. And it's a conceptual question. And let's say we have uh, these loops. So first case, let's say we have a, a loop on this string. Right? And let's say this loop oscillates this way. Just swings from side to side. Right? Um, are we going to introduce produce induced current in this loop? Are we going to get EMF? Why not? Yeah, because again, every time in order to justify, you need to look what happens with the magnetic flux. Because Faraday's law, EMF equals to minus d phi over dt phi m, magnetic flux, right? So every time, flux must change in time. So you need to look at the flux. And flux, by definition, actually I should have written over there. It's a b dot a, b dot a, or it's a b a and cosine of the angle between them. So every time you need to look at these three parameters. What happens with the magnetic field? What happens with the area? And the angle between B and A. In this case, magnetic field. It's a uniform magnetic field which goes to that infinity and to that infinity. So it's everywhere. So as a result, magnetic field is constant. Area, we don't do anything with the area. Area stays the same. And the angle also stays the same. I can pick um, area vector out of the board, for example, right? So the angle will be zero in this case. Right? So uh, in this case, uh, EMF equals zero, and I induced will be equal zero. Right? So no induced current, right? Now, uh, second case, what if I have, oh, let me do this, uh, on a spring. It's not a solenoid, it's a spring, right? And then the loop. So basically, it just moves up and down. So what's the induced EMF? Zero, again, for the same reason, right? Because again, all these three parameters are constant, right? So as a result, EMF equals zero, and I induced will be also zero. Now, next, uh, what if we have this again, a string, and now loop, and how did I draw it? Ah, yeah, this way. So let's say it is, we're spinning it this way. Are we going to produce EMF in this case? We're producing EMF or not? Yeah. Because which parameter is changing? B, A, theta. 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 We're changing the angle, right? So theta is changing, right? So as a result, uh, EMF induced, of course, is not equal to zero. And of course, I induced is not equal to zero. So now EMF is, is produced. Now, uh, next. Let's say we have an infinitely long straight wire, something like this, in which direction current flows this way. I. And let's say this current is constant. And I will take two loops. One is here and it moves this way. Right, so let's say this is my loop. Right. And we are dragging it that way. And the second loop is here, and we are dragging it this way. OK, 
Okay. Are we going to produce any EMF? And what's the direction? EMF and the direction of the current. In this current EMF. So first, let's start with this. Are we inducing any EMF in this uh, example? Are we inducing any EMF? No? Of course not. Of course not. Because again, what happens with magnetic field? Yeah, magnetic field goes down as, we move, as you move away from the wire, right? But if you move along the wire, magnetic field through the loop stays the same, right? It don't change. It's not going to change. It doesn't change. Right. So in this case, I can write, so B is constant, area is constant because we don't do anything with the loop. And the angle, it's up to you. You can make it zero, you can make it 180 degrees, but again, anyway, it is constant. So as a result, flux is constant. And as a result, EMF <coughs> is zero. So no current is, going to produce, is not going to be produced in this case. In this case, are we going to have induced current? Now, yes. Uh, what, sh what changes? Huh? Magnetic field changes, all right. Area stays the same. Uh, angle also stays the same. You can, uh, no, let's first find direction of the magnetic field, right? Ma direction of the magnetic field. Uh, right hand rule, right, so magnetic field lines are going to be like this, right, so uh, this way, yeah, this way. So on this side of the wire, uh, current is going to, I mean magnetic field is going to the external magnetic field uh, into the board forces. So that's our B external, on this side of course, B external, Can be presented with these dots. Okay, so now uh, let me write it again. So D A theta. Area is constant, angle is constant, magnetic field, as you told me, since we are moving away from the source of the magnetic field, of course, magnetic field is getting weaker and weaker and weaker through the loop. So as a result, D is going down. So we can write the flux is going down. So what's the response of the system? If flux is dying, it will be supported, right? Like a Lawrence Nightingale, right? right supported. So uh, it means that it will produce the current in such a direction so that the induced magnetic field is in the same direction as the external magnetic field. So I can write, so B induced is in the same direction as External. Right, so it means that within the loop I have to draw the same direction, so it means that we are going to have this process that uh, be induced. And now, right hand rule, and I will try to use my new loop. <laughs> Right, so uh, into the board, so it means I have to position my hand. It still works, actually, nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> Convenient, right? Uh, so I have to position my hand like this, right, in order to get within the loop my, my fingers into the, into, 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 in, in, in crosses, to get crosses. As a result, the current is going to be um, clockwise, right, on this side. So current is going to be clockwise. That's my I induced. I induced my spread here. I induced clockwise, so it's going to the right hand rule. Okay, number two. Number one, we used to find direction of the cross product. How does the velocity vector affect the right hand rule there? Does it affect the one? Uh, say it again. How does the velocity vector? Which way the velocity? Uh, no, that's uh, no velocity uh, cannot change the direction of the induced current unless unless you change the unless you start moving it that way. Right. Okay. Right. If you start moving this loop that way, direction of the current, it'll switch. 
so which will be opposite, right? But the magnitude of the velocity is not going to change the direction unless you change the direction of the velocity. Right. But of course, uh, magnitude of this velocity is going to change the strength of this current. Right. Right. If you move faster, right. you're going yes. to produce more. Right. 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 Okay. Good. Okay, now let's uh, calculate. Uh, we had this problem in our classes, I think, right? Um, so let's just repeat it. Okay, now we erase this. And after that, we'll move into inductive. So crosses, let's say that's our external magnetic field and it is up to this line. So cross, 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 cross. So that's our the external. And let's say we have a loop, a uh, rectangular shape. Right, we've done this problem. Before. And let's say it moves with velocity v. So what else is given? This width L, uh, let's say 5 centimeters. Uh, then magnetic field P external is going to Tesla <coughs> and velocity is 50 meters per second. So we need to find uh, EMF and we need to find induced current. Hmm. We're done. So, uh, and, and, and the resistance of the loop is 0.1 ohm. Okay. So, which fundamental law is going to describe this again? So far as this law, right? Again, so far as this law. We just need to look at the uh, how fast the flux changes in time. How fast flux changes in time. So, uh, two steps. Let's first find the magnitude or direction, and then uh, first we can find magnitude uh, and then direction. Or first we can find direction and then, then magnitude. So let's do direction first. Direction. Um, so, length rule. Again, I will look at V, A, and theta. Which parameter changes in time in order to give us a changing in time flux? Which parameter changes? Area. Area exposed to the magnetic field. Because overall, area of the loop stays the same. But it shouldn't deceive you, right? So you should realize that what contributes to the flux are only area exposed to the uh, magnetic field. So we're talking about this area, right? So this area, that's what we're interested in. Okay, just area. So area, magnetic field is constant. We don't change it. Uh, angle also constant, you can pick it, you can make it zero, you can make it 180 degrees, it's up to you. But area is, what happens with the area? Increases down, it goes down, decreases, decreases, right, going down. Again, let me emphasize that uh, area exposed uh, to magnetic field, exposed to the magnetic field. So I highlighted this greenish area. Okay, so uh, if area de decreases, so flux decreases. And as a result, system is supported, right? The system will be supported. It will induce magnetic field in the same direction as the external magnetic field. So I can write it here. So B induced is in the same direction as external and I need to remove this okay I want to draw this induced magnetic field 
uh, in the same direction, so crosses. Do I have to restrict myself in terms of drawing these crosses only to this greenish area? Do I have to restrict myself? Can I draw a cross over here? No. You said no? I would say. Guys? No. Is it allowed? Why not? That's where the magnetic field is going. That would have been. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> We're not in quantum mechanics, right? Everything is solid, right? In quantum <laughs> mechanics, yeah, you can, you can debate is it a particle, is it a wave, right? Look, this induced magnetic field produced by what? Say that one more time. This induced magnetic field, mm -hmm. what is the source of this magnetic field? Is the magnetic field on the other No, no, no. Uh, one step deeper, right? Not deeper, right? Sorry. Current, induced current, right? Yeah. right? Induced current, does it flow only in this part of the loop? No. Of course it flows everywhere, right? Not on the outside of it. Huh? Not on the outside of the loop. No, induced current is going to flow through the whole loop. Come on. Oh, I thought it's you were just outside of the loop. No, outside of okay. the okay. no, current, don't yeah. say current outside of the loop. Right. Current is in the loop, right? Yeah. So, but anyway, current flows through the whole loop. It means that current is going to produce this induced magnetic field everywhere, even in this part or there, right? Okay, so it's quite common, right? Students first tell me that it's uh, only in this part. No, 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 because now you produce current, you produce current, it flows through the whole loop, so this induced magnetic field is going to be everywhere, right? So, so I can draw it. Uh, Everywhere. So that's my B into use. And now my loop is going to give me a current, current. Uh, uh, so in, in, so it's a clockwise, right? Clockwise. It's going to be a clockwise direction. So I, I, so it's a, I induced, I induced. So clockwise direction. I induced clockwise. Is it correct? Let me check. Yeah, clockwise direction. Okay, now let's find uh, magnitude then, next step. Both EMF and current. Okay, so now we just need to look at the absolute value of d phi over t. EMF equals to absolute value of d phi over dt. Okay, so uh, let's find now uh, flux. Again, by definition, it's B dot A. Right. Area vector. Let's just make an angle zero. Right. Since the surface is open, you can uh, pick any direction for the area vector. So I will pick in the same direction as the external. So air A, you see? So in this case, it is equal to B A because the angle is zero. Although if, even uh, if it were if it were pi cosine of pi minus one, but anyway we are taking absolute values. Who cares? So it will be absolute value of d B A over d T. So, what can be taken outside of the side of differentiation? Constant. Constant. Well, what is constant? I have no idea. You have no idea. Come no on. Uh, what is constant? Magnetic field. Area changes. Again, area exposed to the magnetic field, right? So, but magnetic field stays the same. So, we can take a magnetic field outside. So, magnetic field can be taken outside because it's constant. So as a result, we'll have uh, B and absolute value of BA over DT. Because B is a magnitude, so it's just a number. Okay, at this point, again, I, I keep saying, uh, like a few years ago, I had a very, very good student in summer, but on the final exam, at this point, particular point, he got stuck like that. For 20 minutes, he couldn't move, right? And then eventually, after some struggling here, actually recall what should be done, what can be done. In order to make a smooth transition, in order to find this, basically it's an area of velocity, how fast area changes in time. 
In order to make this transition smooth, every time I suggest you guys introduce uh, a temporary parameter just for, for a very short period of time. Let's introduce this uh, x for a couple of minutes, or less than a couple of minutes. Short lived element in our solution. So, introduce uh, x. So, as a result, area equals to, in terms of this x, what should be the area? XL. XL. That sounds like Excel, right? The software. Okay, let me use LX. LX, so if I plug it there, okay, so it will be uh, B and D over DT, absolute value of LX. And now, of course, now we know what is constant, right? L. L can be taken outside X, the variable, right? So L goes outside and we'll have B, L, and absolute value of DX over DT. And DX over DT? Speed, speed, in this case, just the speed of uh, this uh, loop, right? How fast X changes in time. That's all speed, speed. Uh, B, L, V. Okay, so now, so EMF equals to B, L, V. Uh, guys, quite often, I see it, because it's easy to remember, right? Quite often students just remember these formulas, right? And they'll, they'll, they'll just write it down right immediately, and I don't like it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right, I want to see physics. I want to see that, right? Yeah, that's what makes me happy. Right? Okay, so if you plug numbers, you will end up with right, 0.5 volts. Actually, I want to ask you, but I already mentioned that. I already said what's the what are the units, 0.5 volts. So now, how can we find current? Ohm's law, right, divided by the resistance. Rate. So you will set. So I equals to induced equals to EMF divided by R. R is 0.1, so it will be uh, 5 amps. 5 amps of current. Okay, the next problem I will skip. You can, I will send you my PDF file. You can look at this. Okay, inductance. Any questions about this problem? Or Faraday's law in general? Or Lenz's rule? Again, every time we have to analyze what happens with the flux. And don't forget to analyze three parameters. B, A, theta, B, A, theta. Bye 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 Ma tu l'amore sul pianeta te lo fai Bye 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 bye